Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I pray that you're blessed today. You know, we all like good drama. We are have become slaves to our TVs, to our devices, always wanting to know what's going on. We want to see it. We want to know it. We want to experience it. We like it when we go to the movies and the surround sound just washes over us or we're watching on our tablet and we see good drama, the good interplay, the good plot, all of the things that go into making a good story. Well, you and I are living a great story. We're in the middle of it. Some believe we could be coming to the end of this wonderful story. What story is this? What drama is this? It is the drama of Christ. It is the drama of Jesus in our lives. It is the drama that surrounds us. Every age, there are those who believe we're living in the end times. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Is Jesus coming today? Several times we feel like the folks in Revelation under the altar, when, oh Lord, when? But Jesus has made a promise. His promise to us is, that he is going to return. We live in the reality of that promise. The disciples in Matthew 24, 25, 26, ask an important question. They're walking through Jerusalem and the disciples ask Jesus, what will be the sign of your return? Because Jesus has said, I'm returning. And Jesus then begins to tell them what's going to happen. And that's where the drama unfolds. Because all of us want to see the signs, the wonders, all of these things. We look in Revelation. John writes in Revelation, I saw heaven open up, and then this happened, and then this happened, and this, then this happened. And we read Revelation, some folk become afraid. But remember, as we read Revelations, it says, blessed is the person who reads and understands these things. Yes, Jesus is going to return. In Matthew well, 130, he says this. And at the time the Son of Man will coming, will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth, especially Israel, will mourn, regretting their rebellion and rejection of Messiah. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and glory in brilliance and splendor. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather together his elect, God's chosen ones, from the four corners of the earth, from one end of the heavens to the other. What's going on in that passage? Jesus says, I'm coming. And when I'm coming, come back, I will come in power. This won't be the little baby born in Jerusalem. This won't be, as some say, a silent invasion. No. Everyone will see Jesus coming. I used to wonder about that. How does everyone see Jesus coming? Well, when this was written, Matthew, Revelation, the New Testament, they were writing in the future tense. We are living in future tense as well. However, we can see things they didn't. I was talking with a dear friend of mine recently, and I said, do you realize how we'll see Jesus when he comes back? He'll be in the sky, yes. But, you know, now we have CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, BBC. We have mute music, mute news. I'm sorry, folks. All the time, everyone will see. Everyone will know this isn't Hollywood. This is Jesus returning. Paul picks up on that same idea here in this part of Matthew. He says, the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise, and those who are alive and remain will meet them in the air. What's going on there? The Son of Man is returning. Jesus warns us time and time and time again, don't get caught in the drama. There will be signs. There'll be wonders. There'll be false Christ. People's love will grow cold. Violence will increase. There'll be wars and rumors of wars. But Jesus then in 
the next part of this chapter 24 and then into 25 gives us several things to work on. What are those things to work on? It's simply this. He tells us to live in a state of readiness. First one, of course, the parable of the fig tree. You see it ripening, you know what's about to happen. Pay attention is what Jesus is telling us. I'm coming. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But I am coming. I tell people, read the newspaper. See what's going on. Jesus even uses a weather illustration. Red sky at morning, sailor take warning. Pardon me. And the idea here is he has given us the wisdom to read, the wisdom to know, but most of all, the wisdom to trust. Do not be panicked. Do not be anxious, but to know that he is coming and he will come and he will come soon and we will get to go home with him. Be ready. The next is the whole idea of being alert because of the managers. The faithful and wise servant whose master's put in charge is always ready for when the master comes. Next, of course, we know the wonderful uh, parable of the ten virgins. You know, so five were ready, five were not. What's the idea here? Well, the principle in that thing is that the bridegroom is going to come. Some have enough oil, some don't. The idea here is to be wise, to be prudent, that your oil doesn't run out. Well, what's my oil? My relationship with Christ. That my love doesn't grow cold. That I don't give up on him. That when I see things happening, I don't become so afraid that I just give up. But instead, I trust him. Why? He's given us the wisdom to trust him, to know him, to walk with him. And then, of course, there's a parable of the stewards and the talents. Am I using my talents for the Father or am I hoarding them because I'm waiting for him to come back? Well, understand the issue here with the talents. Two of the folks that he gave talents to, each one, all three, according to ability. The first two trusted. The third one did not. Didn't trust, didn't like the master. What's the idea here? Jesus is saying, folks, I'm coming. I'm coming back. And I want you to come home with me. Because remember, heaven is indeed our home. I want you to come back with me to live with me forever. I want you to be wheat, not tares. I want you to be sheep, not goats. Because then we get to walk with the Father, to know him. So my encouragement to you today is to live a life of expectant jubilation, knowing that Jesus is coming back and that Jesus is coming back for you and me. Live in a state of perpetual readiness. People used to ask the question, if Jesus came today, would he be, would he be pleased with what you're doing? We have to ask all ask ourselves, ask ourselves that question. Am I ready to go with Jesus? It's not an issue of activity at that point. It's an issue of heart. Is my heart ready to go with Jesus? Have I surrendered myself to him? Have I said, yes, Lord, I am yours. Because if we said that, then we're wheat, then we're sheep. Then we're men and women who are in love with Jesus. And Jesus is simply saying to us, come home. I'm coming for you. Come with me. Lord, we bless you and thank you that you have not left us alone. And yes, Lord, you are going to return. Lord, help us to live in a state of perpetual readiness, knowing that, Lord, you are there with us and for us. So, Father, guide us, lead us until, Lord, that day when we get to meet you in the air. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.